Hi everyone, I'm Jeremy Reynolds from Alpha Aggregation, getting started in finance, here to share with you some really important tips for buying, getting your house at the best possible price. But then, when we're looking at getting your house at the best possible price, and if you've been listening to my series in the last couple of days, you need to establish one thing, you've got to be able to get the property to begin with. So you can think you have a fantastic price, you can have all these things in place, but then we've got these little things called contracts, uh, we've got procedures involved with, which is called settling the property, and there's an important member of our team when doing this, namely it's the conveyancer. Uh, most people don't know what a conveyancer is if they haven't purchased a property before. Many people don't see the value in a conveyancer, why? Because nothing's gone wrong. And the reason it's been so seamless is because the conveyancer has done their job to a higher regard. However, that's not always the case. They really come into importance when there are some problems that need solving, either leading up to settlement, conditions that need to be met to enable settlement, or not settling and making that decision on behalf of, of, of the client working with them. So today I do have Damien O'Day, lawyer. And Hi Jeremy. How are you today? Good, you, mate. Good. So I make sure I have the experts here, here with me. Now, Damien is a lawyer and a conveyancer, which in, which in the South Australia is huge because yeah. we don't have the legal parameter that you have to be have to use a lawyer, but we like to recommend those with that are lawyers as well because it allows us to give the extra value yeah, and uh, and uh, make sure those eyes are dotted better and those T's are crossed better. Yeah. Now, now, Damien, I'll get back on track. So what are some particular things that could stop that lovely first home buyer's property settling or for you to say, hang on, we need to look at this again and, yeah. and making sure we're protecting that client. Let's talk a little bit about that, Damien. Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Hi, Jeremy. Um, yes, um, I have had some situations in the past where, where clients have uh, submitted a loan application and the loan application has unfortunately been declined. Uh, the conveyance or lawyer will uh, at that stage seek instructions from the client and as to whether they wish to proceed on and try and obtain alternative finance or they may wish to uh, uh, stop the uh, settlement process and uh, withdraw. In that situation it's important for the conveyance or lawyer to make sure that the client has uh, used all their best endeavours to obtain the finance and uh, if they've done that, they need to also have a letter or let a series of letters from uh, lending institutions or banking banking organisations uh, setting out that they've applied for finance but it's been declined. That way, the conveyance or lawyer will ensure that the any deposit paid by the by the purchaser will be returned to them without question. Uh, it's important that the conveyance or lawyer uh, look into this process; otherwise, there could be an argument as to whether the deposit should be forfeited. Uh, it's extremely important. Fantastic, and we know with the people that we work with, it takes people time and energy and effort to save that deposit. So we want it in, kept in the safe hands of the client and, until it needed for their property of their dreams. Now I do have Alex here, one of our qualified credit reps and mortgage brokers. Thank How you, are Jeremy. you Alex? I'm good Jeremy, how are you? Good. To prevent that from happening for instance, let's say that, uh, that they wanted that property and you want to make sure that they can afford it and, and so forth. What steps would we take with a client to make sure that they can, uh, as we call it, service the loan? How would we do that? Yeah, good question, Jeremy. So essentially, we sit down with the client and we make sure that they can actually afford the loan because with the, the laws in place, the client has to be able to actually afford the loan. So we'll look at their income, their, uh, their spending habits as well, just to make sure that we don't put them in a horrible financial situation where they can't afford the loan. Fantastic. So we do. Is, we always like to make sure, and it's, it's come from my tongue a few times, not put the cart before the horse. Ideally, you come see your mortgage broker first, but it's not always the case. If it is the other way around, what we would like to do is make sure that we place some buffers and put some buffers in place. I say, I said on the previous video, just because you can afford a certain home doesn't mean that you should be necessarily paying that much for it. You can potentially get less for it. So we like to put some buffers in place. And uh, how do we do that, Alex? So for instance, we're in a dream at the moment where, where interest rates are at all time lows, but what if they change? How do we manage that sort of cash flow and serviceability then? 
Oh, good question. Well, the good thing is with sociability at the moment, they assess it at a higher rate. So essentially banks, I've already pre, you know, got the future checking that make sure that any client getting a home loan, even though it's it, the rates are, you know, around the mid threes to high to mid to low fours, that they can still pay the loan if in case the rates go up to 7% or higher. Excellent, we like to take the conservative view as well. Now, David, this ties a lot of the mortgage broken conveyancing, legal involved as well. Now, your average consumer, it's not their skill set to understand contracts, isn't it right? No, yeah. and, and, and nor should it be, really. That's why that they, there's people such like you that spend a lot of time at university, a lot of time practicing to understand these things. Yeah. One of the things which is often neglected for people looking at their real estate contracts is, is two dates, the settlement date, yeah. and the finance, finance date. date. Yeah. Now, first, what are, they're two different dates. Some people go, well, isn't that the same thing? And why should we be having a discussion with the broker, the conveyancer, and the vendor if those dates are appropriate? Uh, yeah, you want to have a discussion about the, the finance clause date or the uh, uh, subject to finance condition. You, you have uh, elected to, for that condition to be in your contract, so you rely on a heavily um, and so you must uh, talk to your conveyance or a lawyer um, when that date is nearing, otherwise uh, some things can go hairy. Yeah, yeah. A absolutely. So with, with that in context then, uh, what if we're, we're early in the piece and, and the, the client is, has, has maybe put an offer on a house, they haven't signed the contract beforehand, what conversation would you would you have with them before they sign that contract? Yeah, I would tailor it to their needs. So if they needed to get finance, um, I would strongly suggest that they allow enough time to to um, a source finance and obtain what I would call unconditional approval. Unconditional approval is is a stronger term or a stronger position to be in um, uh, uh, before you enter into a contract. Um, so that then it's just a formality for the uh, banks to then uh, be getting ready for settlement, and you can you can use the the special condition finance uh, in your favour, in the sense that um, by that day you'll be ready to go with your bank, and you can say absolutely that um, that we're ready to settle this property. Um, I have had situations in the past where. There is unconditional approval, but the documents aren't ready, and then the bank will decline. Uh, this can be a bit of a problematic situation as well. So I like to say the clients uh, have un unconditional appro uh, unconditional approval with your finance before the special condition date, and it's, and you have your documents prepared and submitted, and then you're ready to settle. So on that special condition date, you're ready to settle. Fantastic, and this means, unconditional means it legitimately has been approved, but there's more steps that go after that. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of clients unwillingly not go, well, it's been approved, fantastic, we're ready to go. There's other steps, they, they still, at this stage they haven't signed their actual loan agreement yet. So we've got to be mindful and, and of how long things actually take. So they can be approved, so we can meet the finance date, but then it can still also be a struggle to meet the settlement date. Often this can be a great term for negotiation. Uh, I, I, so I spoke in video one in this series of understanding the needs of the vendor, so the person selling the property. Why did they pick that date? Why was that date decided? Yeah. Was it a set time frame that they needed to meet for another purchase or, or sale or other personal or, or business reasons? Or is it because they had a certain time frame where they thought would be appropriate? Find out, work with these people and, and negotiate those types of things. Now, Alex, when you're when you're helping your clients and you're finding that best rate for them, yes. the best loans that structure them as well, how important is it when you're talking with the various institutions that you find out what the different time frames and how long their approval well, rates are? Very important because sometimes when a bank puts the late rates that are very you know very low, they will be bombarded with so many applications, so the turnover time can be instead of being a nice reasonable one two two day period. Can push it back to a week or even longer. Absolutely, so this is where we look at your individual needs and have a strategy involved. And we try and mitigate this because we want to identify, yes, best rate's important, but will that delay in time cost you money? So when we're working out your goals for your financial situation, we will look at your immediate goals. The immediate goal there is to settle. 
So make sure you can do that at the minimum cost, but then look at your short term. So your first 12 months and what the cost of that loan will be and your repayments, and then working through to the overall strategy. Uh, before we end, let's get any final comments first of all, Damien. Yes, I just wanted to, um, uh, I'm excited to uh, introduce my colleague. Uh, yes. I've appointed uh, today, Courtney Gentsch. She's working with me at O'Day Lawyers. Um, Courtney, I explained some things to you this morning about having a look at a first conveyancing matter. And one of the few things that I pointed out to you that you needed to do in respect of a contract, you needed to have a look at certain things. Is that what O'Day Lawyers um, does for clients? They yeah, uh, kind of make life easier, pick up all yeah. the little things that can trip them over and yeah. make it either fall through or last longer. Yeah, and identify certain issues with the property that the, uh, the client may may feel that um, they need to cancel the contract. Yeah. Yeah, and we look at the form one to, to make sure that there's no, nothing adverse against the property. Um, it's a bit like adding value to the client. You know, they don't expect you to just receive the contract and, and form one and just say, yep, and tick it off. It's, uh, we we look, look at it at thoroughly. It. Yeah. And due diligence is... Due is diligence, yeah. 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 It's that added value, and I, and I think that's why a lawyer is important. Uh, and at OA Lawyers, we look at our contracts thoroughly. Um, we have had contracts where they've been written poorly, uh, and we uh, work with the agents to, to correct that by addendum. Fantastic. Now, Alex, uh, based on those some of those issues or, or, or things that we need to do, any final points of consideration for our clients? Well, the good thing is when you, when you deal with us, you have to not only just deal with just the mortgage broker, but we can also help you with your legal requirements. Yes. And we also have real estate agents as well that can help you with your needs too. Absolutely. It is about the power of that team and having a one-stop shop. And if there wasn't more than a thin wall separating us, Damien, here yeah, yeah, at Clove Valley yeah. Park, it really, realistically is physically, <laughs> as well as, a, a, you know, actually a, a one-stop shop as well. So please, if, you, if, if these things ring true to you, if you are looking at buying your first, your second, your tenth house, please uh, give me a call, Jeremy Reynolds, at Alpha Aggregation, Alpha Finance Solutions on 1300 541 777. Or if you want to get in contact with the O'Day Lawyers, how can we reach you? Sure, my, my name is Damien O'Day and you can contact me anytime really. Uh, my number is 0402 488 722. Our email address at the moment is only one. It's damien at tpdg.com.au and the first interview is always free, so give me a call. So, and, and we do have Alex here. And so first, where are you based and how can we reach you? To so I work in Cobelli Park. If you want to contact me, my mobile number, 0430 Fantastic. And the easiest way is just to call me direct on that, 1300 541 for any of these needs or any particular finance questions that you may have related to uh, refinancing or paying for buying a new property. I'm Jeremy Reynolds and we look forward to helping you achieve your financial goals. Thanks, guys.